How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is episode 15 of a Let's Play series for Farming Simulator 22 on the mod map Maple Farm. And where we last left off, we ended up building our whole mega field. We finally got everything cleared out. We got everything taken care of. We plowed out every square inch of that field and then we took our stone picker, we picked all the stones out of there, we built a new custom spinnery where we're able to not only produce fabric, but we're able to then take that fabric and make clothes directly. And now we are finally in the month of March and this is where things are really gonna start happening. As you can see, we've got tons of product. We have gone through the remainder of the winter time, uh, went ahead about two months between, you know, recording here and wow holy smokes do we have a lot of things uh kind of squirreled up and and ready to kind of <laughs> let loose as you can see we've got all this wool here all this we've got tons of eggs stacked up over here and in our little wood or not wood pallet the uh pallet storage over here 25 pallets worth of eggs we've got to figure out something to do with that we have got over here on the chemistry set aka the farm productions oh we've got so much stuff we've got water that's being produced i ended up collecting uh snow which is then being converted into water we've got uh lime that was produced we've got road salt we've got silage we've got hay 800,000 liters of silage 900,000 liters of hay 131,000 liters of methane. We've got tons of methane. Over at the production site, at the biogas plant, holy smokes. I mean, we've got just so much stuff going on right now. Over there, almost 300,000 liters worth of methane just squirreled up ready for me to sell off. We've also got down at the kind of sawmill, the renovated sawmill area, We've got over 3,700 liters uh, of pellets in the pellet production site right there, but over 200,000 liters have been spawned, or almost 200,000 liters have been spawned from that production point alone, and it's just sitting there waiting for us to sell. We also have this here, 150,000 liters almost in pellets, 118,000 liters in furniture, and the high point of this is going to be next month. Cannot wait to be able to sell off the furniture, sell off the pellets, because that's going to be a pretty, pretty penny. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Yes, I think that is next month. So that's going to be quite a bit of money. So we are going to, at first, uh, going to take all these whoops, pallets of wool, because, come on, why is it not taking it? There we go. Okay, apparently it just doesn't want me to take it. We need to bring the wool over here, load all of it into this location so that it will then go over to our spinnery there and continue to make fabric and clothes. Got tons and tons of fabric, tons and tons of clothes, and we just want to make sure that we're continuing to produce. Let's see. Let's go ahead and get all this over. We're going to take our eggs from over there and store those over in the... Uh, storage unit over there and then what else do we have in store well it's March and we have the ability now to plant our big field and we are going to take this opportunity to plant something to sustain our chickens because our chickens they're going through tons and tons of food we have over I think we have exactly 2,000 chickens right now so it's one of those where they are just going through a ton of feed and we need to be able to keep up with them. I've had to purchase now two rounds of 25,000 liters of chicken feed so it can at least sustain them for a few months. And right now, you know, like I said, they're just burning through it and we've got to we've got to get this under control. Whoops, almost. So once these are all loaded in, they'll eventually be transported over to the uh, spinnery just uh, on the other side of the hill over there. So that way we can uh, just keep producing. 
There we go. And one more pallet. And then we'll get the egg. So far, 26 pallets of eggs. 26. That is an absolute boatload of eggs. And we got one more. There we go. 28 pallets of eggs we are just loading this up slowly but surely so now what we need to do is we need to grab one of our tractors i think i'm going to go with this one here this one should be more than adequate the q series grab our cedar right here and we are going to go plant some barley in the field across from us here There we go, set up to barley. We've got, well, we're mostly full on fertilizer and seeds. That should be more than adequate for right now. And here we go. Let's rock and roll, get this all planted. Probably going to make uh, probably two full passes around this before we kind of set everything up. And what we also need to do in the meantime is I might build a wall uh, lining the field just down the way. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a little while. But uh, one of those, there's a large driveway on the other side of my field. And if any of the other local farmers aren't paying attention or whatnot, I'd much rather them hit the fence than drive into my field. So that's we might go that route. Um, also, going to spend a little bit of money today because uh, we are getting ready. I think next month we will be ready for our first harvest of the season when it comes to grass. We'll do our first mow of the season and... We've got some extra money, might as well invest in uh, some bigger and better equipment. Yeah, so this area is the area I'm talking about building a fence right here. I think this will be a nice little area to be able to just line the whole uh, drive here. And then we don't have to worry about people, you know, cutting through or, you know, potentially damaging crops. And as you can see, during the winter time, we have been working on making sure that this field is well maintained. It is partially fertilized. We laid down a big, thick layer of slurry so that we could all well, digestate technically, so we could have some nitrogen in the ground. We also have the fertilizer here in this particular cedar. So we are working on that uh, to get it up to its full and final state. Let's see. After this, we're going to have to come through with a roller. So we might end up purchasing a roller to make sure that we are good to go in that regard. I don't know. We, I mean, we've got so, so much to do. So much stuff. Like I said, we got to finish getting this all up and running. We're basically able to make... Uh, 
make two passes or make two actions with one pass doing the fertilizing and the seeding um, so that is saving us time even though the cedar itself isn't that wide um, we're basically like I said making two passes in one so I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing this and I will come back with you here in a little while
Second to last pass. And perfect. Now, let's go ahead and take this equipment back to the main farm. We'll wash it off, and then we have got to get a roller. And once we have a roller, we are all done with this field until it is done growing and ready for harvesting. So, we are going to need a couple of sets of equipment here going forward. We're going to need some kind of harvester. And we're going to need uh, the roller to finish off this field. So we're going to have to kind of decide what is going to be the best course of action going forward with a harvester. Um, a lot of the fields going forward are not like my field where there's a ton of room for me to kind of work around. Most of the fields are actually very tight and not a lot of space to work with. Uh, let's, yeah, let's go wash this real quick. Start washing this off. So I'm kind of thinking of not getting the largest and most expensive piece of equipment I can possibly get my hands on, but rather something that's going to um, probably be somewhere in the middle is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, but we'll have to see because it's one of those where this field is going to take a really long time if all I have is, you know, kind of mid-grade equipment. But, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and pack this away. And then we have to go up to the, uh, to the shop and make a purchase for a roller. We'll see you up there. Alright, getting ready to pull up to the field. It's directly in front of me. We're going to get up here, we're going to unfold all of the equipment, the roller that I have here. Something like this.
drop it down. And here we go. Make our trips around the field here and we'll be good to go after this. There is uh, nothing after this to do for this field. We have done everything that we need to do up until this point. We can just kind of leave it as is and wait for everything to kind of grow in. So really looking forward to that. I feel like I missed the corner just a bit. Okay, there we go. So we get to run around here at roughly 15 miles an hour at 12, I think it was 12.3 meters in width. So this is a nice tool. We could have gone a little bit bigger, but this was very, very expensive. It was like $140,000 for some of the bigger uh, rollers and just didn't feel like it was a good uh, expenditure. This was only 40000 at the end of the day and you know, it just means a few more passes, but this also has a few tricks up its sleeve as well. So I think it was uh, kind of the better of the purchases. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out here and cut us back in as soon as we are done with this field. We'll see you in a while.
Okay, so we are all done with the giant field across the street. It turned out spectacular. I'm so happy. All that work has finally paid off, and check it out. If we look at the map, you'll see all of it planted with barley. It is absolutely massive. It can basically encompass all four of our fields and then some in, in, in mass. I mean, th this is absolutely huge. So I am very happy about this. It is all planted and growing, and it's been mulched, plowed, the whole nine yards. We're not going to have any more problems with it going forward until it's time to harvest. So we're on cruise control, and based on what I can see in the calendar here, we planted barley. I think we should be able to harvest this maybe in July. I'm hoping. That's. I mean, we, we shall see. So now that the field has been attended to, I don't have anything else going on with it, I want to start working on a few things here around the farm. First off, I want to be able to figure out a way to create a passage between these two fields. So I've got my sheep pasture right here, and I've got my cow pasture just right beside it. And I've got all these hedges right here. I think I'm going to go ahead and rip out a section of hedging right along th eh, probably about this area about here. And maybe install a gate or something between the two pastures. So that way, instead of having to go out, you know, after doing the mowing from the first pasture here, go out and around to here and then go through the next gate into this pasture, I can just come right here. Just go, go through a gate and be done. So let's... Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Is it not cutting down? There it goes. Okay, so let's put that there. Chunk of wood. Go right here next to it. And then let's go get the stump grinder. We'll grind that out real quick, and then we can build us a nice little gate. Let's see, I'll need one of my tractors. Take the little blue one right here. This will be plenty. There we go. I think the grinder is right over here. Yep, perfect. Gonna have to clean this grinder too. Okay, so let's bring this back through the gate. Okay, let's bring this over. Can we grind these up real quick? And just like that. Alright, I'm going to get to work on building the fence. We'll see you in a little bit. And there we go. Built me a new fence between both the pastures here. And check it out. And come in and out as I please. I love it. All right, let's go ahead and take this back to the uh, to its garage. I'm gonna go ahead and wash this off real quick because we have got a messy stump grinder. There we 
go. Let's go ahead and do this quick spray down too. While I'm thinking of it, let's go ahead and grab the wood trailer. We'll just take the stump grinder and wood trailer back over to the uh, to the sawmill. So that way, it's out of the way. I have just more room here at the farm. And there's really no point of just keeping it here. It's just kind of separated from everything else. I have my uh, tree harvester over there, so I might as well have this over there as well. So I will rush over there real quick, drop this off, and then come on back. Because I have more projects to do. All right, I went ahead and dropped all that stuff off at the sawmill. Now I just want to come over here and check out what we've got going on at the spinnery. As you can see, we have clothes. Cents for fashion, 1,000 liters each. Plus, we take a look inside. We have 42 thousand liters of clothes and we're still processing like this is just incredible incredible i'm so thrilled we've got so much product that is ready to go if we take a look clothes are not cheap look at this seventeen thousand dollars per thousand liters we are going to make a killing and these i thought it was pellets that was coming due at the high point next month it's actually closed so we're going to be waiting one more month in the month of april we are going to sell every every stitch of clothing that we can every bit of it is going to get sold and it is going to make us a tiny little fortune gonna be so thrilled when that happens so let's hop back in the tractor here and get to work on our next bit of projects so what has happened is I have contracted out with a company there that does bees. They send you little kits to build beehives. And I had purchased these kind of flat pack beehives and now it's time for me to go ahead and assemble them. And then once they're assembled, the company will come out, bring you a queen and, and everything that you need to have your bees. So yeah, that's gonna be fantastic. Let's go ahead and park the tractor. There we go. Now I think I'm going to keep the hives way out in the back of the sheep pasture here. I think that's going to work out just fine. And the sheep, they'll stay away from them. They, they won't bother them whatsoever. And with their thick woolly hides are not gonna you know cause too much problems i think right back here in this back corner will work out perfectly to have bees and i think i'll even build a little shelf off to the side here where i can store all the honey until it comes time to be able to you know do something with it so let's go ahead and do that let's start building those uh those hives see you in a while all right, I went ahead and assembled all the beehives. The company came out and they brought me everything I needed. You can see all the bees just buzzing around now. So hopefully after a little while, I'll start getting some honey and be able to do something with that. Maybe have, uh, have it on my toast fresh every morning. That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Anyways, we built the gate over here. We've now got the bees up and running. But there's one other thing that I want to address. I want to make my farm a little bit more energy efficient. I think it'd be a really good idea to get the contractor out here and see what he can do about either installing maybe some solar panels or something along those lines to be able to kind of make the make the farm just a little bit more energy efficient and you know not as uh, taxing on my energy bill because it's been adding up here lately. We've got so much stuff running and churning in the background. We've got the farm productions here, which is costing us a real pretty penny every single month because it's just chugging away and using tons of power. So let's see if we can kind of neutralize that with uh, with something, whether it's you know uh, uh, wind turbines or some kind of uh, 
like I said, solar panel array, who knows? Who knows? Let's see what we can figure out, though. Got my contractor on the, on the line. He's going to come over here in a little while, and he's going to slap something together for me. I'm looking forward to it. All right, so the contractor has come and gone, and I am absolutely thrilled with their work. Let's see if I can see it from back over here. Here we go. You can see it right on top of the sheep barn there. We've got one, two new solar panels that are going to be able to catch a ton of sun. I've got a couple of battery packs that are just kind of tucked away in a cubby uh, inside the sheep barn here, and then I'll be able to transfer that power into the kind of main wire works throughout the rest of the farm here, because this is wired for power, so I'll be able to backfeed this into the rest of the farm. This is amazing, but I also had him install that you can see the little uh, windmill right on top there that is going to help power a set of battery packs to help subsidize the power for the feeding robot right here so this is a huge weight off my shoulders i'm going to be able to just start saving some energy and who knows i might be able to start actually making a little bit of money every month instead of spending it every single month but we'll see we'll see how it turns out um, let's see, after all that, now we need to go to the shop, because although these have been a slice of amazing, we can do a lot better. And with $764,000, we can do a lot, lot better. So let's go ahead, we will grab, let's grab the little white one. A little white tractor, a little T series. And while we're up there, we might as well fix it up too, because it needs a little TLC. Let's go ahead and grab that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wash the front and rear deck mower off, and then we're going to take this up to the shop and sell it, and then we're going to make a bit of an upgrade. Not even a bit, a, a pretty decent size upgrade. But I will cut us out from here, and I'll cut us back in as soon as we get up to the shop. We'll see you in a little while. All right, we're up here at the shop. I'm going to go ahead and sell off the couple of uh, front and rear deck mowers I have, and going to repair the tractor I have. So let's go ahead and do all that real quick. So repair, repaint, sell. Repair, repaint, sell. And repair. There we go. Perfect. So we're up to $814,000. Let's go ahead and head into the shop and make some purchases. We'll see you in a little while. There we go. $400,000 later, we have these. We got the Crone Big M with the nice upgraded motor and rear attachment with PTO. I also got me a little uh, uh, hitch extender here, which will work out very, very nicely. Technically, it's a dolly, but it's got all the bits and pieces on here to be able to extend as well as another PTO drive extension. So I can take the PTO drive from here through this and be able to hook up my baler directly to my mower. So one pass and done. Gonna absolutely love it. So let's go ahead. Oh, ho, 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 yes. Love it, love it, love it. We're going to have to come back and get the other tractor, but look at that. So we got all the connections, all the stuff that we need, and this is going to work out, like I said, it's going to work out perfectly because we're going to be able to do our baling and our mowing all in one pass. Now, I might not need this extender. I might be able to get away with just doing like one uh, straight connection between this device and the mower and my balers but I'm not sure if the wings on the mower here are going to interfere with the wings on my baler so I got this just in case because I can always sell this back return it not a big deal 
but it's going to be kind of a shock if I go to start cutting and then have to stop just to go pick up this. So I might as well just buy it now in worst case scenario. If I don't use it, I don't use it. I can sell it back. It wasn't that expensive. So it's going to be a really nice uh, piece of equipment if it's needed. If not, meh, no harm, no foul. But we are almost back to the farm. I'm going to cut out here and then we are going to park this thing and be good to go. I might hook up to the baler when we get there, just straight to this, just to see if for some reason there's going to be any kind of interference between the PTO and, I'm sorry, the wings on this mower versus the wings on the uh, baler that we have. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how everything goes. All right, I am back here at the farm. Let's go ahead and... We will drop off this uh, dolly right here. Like I said, worst case scenario, we won't need it, but at least it's here now in case we do. So let's hook up to our baler. Oh, hey, there's a trailer there. Oof. This. There we go. Now, now we're talking. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this to kind of swivel around. And we're going to park this right in the cow field for now because I believe next month we'll be able to start harvesting again. We'll be able to mow all the fields and we'll be good to go. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of get it all nice and set up. There we go. So something like this. Actually, I have to go and get the, uh, the stacker as well. But... Like I said, this is just kind of a test right now. Unfold. Let's see how those wings are. Um, actually... We might be okay. Lower that down. So if I really turn hard, it's going to bump into it. So that's going to be an issue. So you know what? Let's go ahead and grab the bale stacker and the extender, the little dolly. Let's raise that back up, disconnect. Okay, so that's all fine. That's not the end of the world. Like I said, we'll grab the do uh, dolly and the bale stacker, and then should be okay from there. That's going to create more than enough space between the wings on my mower and the kind of uh, wings on the baler there. go now, it's gonna be a really long train when everything's said and done but it's what we need in order to get everything that we want so when everything's said and done it's gonna be worth it all right let's pull in drop this here 
We'll drop that there. Just make backing up to it that much easier. Okay, that's connected. Drop that, let's go. Close that. Now, let's grab this. There we go. Look at that, that's gonna be Plenty, plenty, plenty of space. Now, so if we fold this down, you'll be able to see just how much room we've got to work with. I could probably do a full 180 turn. Oh yeah, look at that. And it's just gonna follow along and be good to go. Unless I jam really hard on the turns It's not going to like that, but for the most part, this is going to work out just fine. So we'll park this right here for now. Like I said, I think next month is when we'll be able to fire this beast up and cut all this grass. Be good to go. And we'll be able to just make one pass from now on. Not going to have to worry about, you know, doing, you know, all the cutting and then all the bailing and then all the stacking. Well, the bailing and stacking is one pass. But then all the pickup and all that, like, we're, we're going to be able to save so much time when everything's said and done. This, this is just fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this. So now, now we need to figure out how to get our money back. And guess what? We've already figured it out. We've got tons and tons of methane. Look at this. 130,000, 143,000 liters of methane here, and it's still chugging along. We're almost full on silage. I mean, we've got over half a million liters of grass. That's from all the contract works we've been doing. It's just incredible the amount of product that we have just stored up in here, just chugging along. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my trailer there. I'm actually going to run up to the shop first, grab my uh, tractor, then grab the trailer, and then bring... Actually, you know what? Let's just leave that tractor there. We've got plenty of tractors to spare. We can spread them out for just now. I'll grab the little guy right here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this front loader tool right here. Because no sense in taking that with me. There we go. Let's bring this over, pick up a load of methane, and then head up to the uh, the biogas plant. Uh, let's see, we want methane. There we go. All right, let's see what we can get up to, because we have 140,000 liters here. We have almost 300,000 over at the biogas plant. That's going to be a nice chunk of change right there between all these. Let's see, at the biogas plant, we scroll up. There it is, 279,000 liters of methane. That's ridiculous, the amount of methane we have. That's going to be lots and lots of money. So, all right, going to head up there. See you in a while. All right, so I'm here with the last trailer load from the farm. 14,000, almost 15,000 liters left. Let's go ahead and dump this out and finish selling everything from the farm. And then we're going to set our sights on the biogas plant itself and be able to pick up everything from there. 23 grand just in what was left in that trailer load. Let's go ahead and head over and start picking up some, uh, some product from here. See you in a while. A 
All right, we got the last little bit of methane from the biogas plant here. It's taking us a little while, but we have done it. And there we go. Another $19,000. We are up to $1.08 million. That. Whoo. We are now millionaires once again. Love it. All right. But let's go ahead and head back to the farm. We'll see you over there. All right. Made it back here to the farm and got some great news. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take this tractor. I got some great news. I hired a nursery, and they had a whole bunch of, of already grown uh, like shrubs and hedges. They went ahead and planted them all along the field edge on the other side of the field there to line that road to be able to... Uh, you know, to, to limit the lane right there. So I'm going to go ahead and check that out. I'll meet you over there. All right, so we are almost there, as you can see. Oh, look at that. That looks fantastic. Oh, yes. They did an amazing job. I am so pleased with this. Nice, it lines the entire roadway here absolutely perfect right next to the field it's going to prevent people from just diving into the field yep 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 very very happy with this indeed perfect and this is going to be a perfect place to leave this episode we accomplish so much we have gotten this entire field all of this planted rolled it is good to go we have gotten a new fence access between the cow pasture and the sheep pasture. We sold off all of our methane from the farm and from the biogas plant. We have gotten a company come in and install all these hedges here and they turned out fantastic. I absolutely love it. We got a lot accomplished today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please show them by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things. The algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.